Hey peeps, so surprise live video tonight. I might be overselling it a bit, but um, I'm taking a week off this week and uh, I thought I'd do a video tonight because I actually got something going on tomorrow night, but I like doing my videos, so I thought I'd screw down the shop after hours and film this video tonight. And I thought I would do a video on how to put um, a pocket into pretty much just about any uh, shorts pattern uh, you could probably do this too with the straight skirt pencil skirt maybe an a-line skirt you could also do this for um, pants that don't have pleats in the front essentially this is a really traditional way of doing pockets and when my kids are little all their pants had pockets done this way so i'm going to show you how to make a pocket for any pants pattern let's say that shorts pattern let's say that okay so essentially what you will need to do is uh, cut out your shorts. I've done a little tiny, just quickly whipped up like a mock pair of shorts pattern here because it's small. We can get the video done nice and quick tonight. But um, you would pre-cut your pattern pieces good to go uh, out of fabric. You could also do it with the paper pattern as well, but let's take it in this direction because you could also do this with an existing pair of shorts. So you could just unpick one part of the shorts and uh, and do this technique as well. So our shorts piece all cut out here, and then we need to discern, be able to discern which is the front and the back. So there's no confusion. I'm going to take the back pieces, and if you're not sure, uh, your back pattern piece is always higher than your front pattern piece. Oh, sorry, here at the crotch is always higher than your front pattern piece because it has to go over your curvy butt and usually this piece that's cut out is larger so that's usually how you can spot the back piece from the front piece so let's park that back piece over there and here is our front pattern piece so now let's make a cool pocket that we can use with these shorts so i'm going to take i'm just doing one but you could do it on both probably would do it on both right side up i'm going to park the other bit for the time being and let's draw a flower on here so you guys know it's right side up so there is right side up on my shorts oh things you'll need tonight not a lot of stuff stippers a fabric marking pen some paper and a sharpie and i'm going to make these entirely on my um juki overlocker so overlocker for this project because it's quick but you can do it on your sewing machine as well so here is our pattern piece and uh, the front pattern piece. I'm going to put a piece of paper underneath it and we want to give ourselves put this pattern piece over on the right hand side of the paper so we've got a little bit of room over here, a little bit of room down here and then this, what you do next will depend on the size of the hands that need to go in the pocket. So, uh, you know, little kids don't need as big of a pocket opening, but it's a good idea just to measure their little hands and get some idea of space so you don't make the pocket too small. It's the only thing I really can't give you measurements for because it'll change grown-ups versus kids. So I'm just going to take a ballpark today and say I want my pocket opening to be about, well, I'm going to say five inches there. So I'm going to take that measurement that I like, which is five inches, and fold over the corner of the fabric on an angle. I would say that's probably about 60 degrees. Yeah, remember you used to use those um, origami kites you used to make? It's about that sort of angle. You don't want to go too far over because then the pocket's too far in the front and you don't want to go not over enough because then the pocket just looks a bit naff. So sort of about here and then we're going to fold that over and oh i should mention i've got my little um iron and iron mat here and to make things easier for me i'm going to iron that so i can see that line nice and clearly so i give that an iron boop -de -boop. and this is what we have here so now that i've ironed them and I fold that back open that gives me a nice crisp line see that line there and it almost seems redundant but i'm going to go back and iron it again flat so it doesn't fold over and give me trouble, but I still have that line marked. Cool? Cool. All right, so next, I'm going to get my Sharpie pen, and I'm going to do this through the camera, so I'm sure it's going to be fine. There'll be dramas. I'm going to flip it so I can see it better, and I'm going to essentially trace, not the whole pattern. If this is a grown-up's pattern, it'll go right over here. I'm going to trace the last four or five inches of the front pattern piece this way, and likewise down here probably a good 10 inches cool so that gives me the corner oops <laughs> the corner of my pattern see that there and now that i've done that i'm going to fold this opening over good thing i pressed it and i'm going to come along and just copy that like so 
and now I'm going to take away this pattern piece and I'm going to measure across the top about one and a half inches so let's say there uh, as a grown-up you would probably want to make that a little bit bigger again you have to sort of wing it based on how big you want the pocket to be and I'm going to measure down here two and a half inches which feels like that might be two and a half inches because it's a kid's pocket again if this is a grown-up I might even go down to four inches maybe I'd probably go across from here two and a half and down here four so just scale it and then I'm going to draw a line that goes straight down a line that goes straight across like so, and then just curve that out. Here we go, that's pretty fat. And now, I'm going to get some, oh, and don't use your dress fabric scissors, we're gonna get paper scissors, and we're gonna cut this out, all of this. So this bit, and this bit, and then this curve. So quickly chop this out, chop, 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 oh, Penny, you're too enthusiastic and you chopped it too far, but you guys didn't see that. If I didn't say anything, you wouldn't know. All right, and then following that curve there, and then straight down here, around the curve here. And now we have our pocket piece. So let's get this paper and just pip it over here. I was going to throw it over my shoulder, but I might need it. So I'm going to, in a surprising act of organisation and pre-planning, I'm going to pop it over there instead. All right, so now we have this bit, and I'm going to cut out two pocket pieces out of my fabric. So pin it on and cut it out. I am going to just cut it today. So you would do this two lots here and then flip it over and do two lots here. So this way and this way. So that's on folded fabric. Cool. So I'm just going to cut it just real quick this way so that you guys don't have to wait for me to pin it. Oh, and I am using the paper scissors to cut and I'm thinking, oh, Penny, why didn't you get the fabric scissors and bring them over? Probably because I don't know where they are. Um, shout out to Corey and Louise who are holding out the fort while I'm away. Place is super tidy when I came in tonight, so I'm thinking I should take more time off. <laughs> All right, so now I don't know who's making the mess. I I didn't think it was me, but mm, it walks like a duck, cracks like a duck. Okay, so this is my pattern piece, and I've cut that out like so. And I would have two lots of these. I'm going to now take one, and let's give this a direction too. So let's say there's flowers on this one. There we go, so you can see which is the pattern. Like so. We're going to take the one with the pattern that is shaped this way and set it aside. And this one here with the pattern, we're going to flip them back around so they are pattern sides together. So right sides together. This top right side piece I'm now going to fold over my stencil or I could go here with my scissors and chop it off. But we'll just fold it for today. Pop it on here, and then I'm going to use my fabric marking pen, but you would pin it and chop it off. Let's chop it. All right, so can you see that? Yep, chop, 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 oh. chop, and chop. So now I have my pocket piece, so I will have two pieces that look like this, right sides together with a cut out this way, and then two pieces, mirror image of that for the other side. Now we get our front piece, which is uh, uh, over here, and we want it right side out. So there's our front, right side out. And we have this bit here that we folded over and ironed. We're now gonna take the bold step of chopping it off along that mark that we made. Just going ahead and chopping it. And if this was the pattern piece, you couldn't chop that because you need, well, yeah, you could chop it. Yeah, if this is a pattern piece, you could chop that off as well. But just remember, you'd always have to then do the pockets this way to make your pants. All right, so now what will happen is right sides together, we're going to put this bit here and go ahead and stitch it. So over to the overlocker, I might just bring the overlocker over here, actually. I love being dainty. There we go control is nearby yep all right so now we're going to go ahead and this is a nice straight line the overlocker remember whenever you use your overlocker do a test first I did a test so I'm not even making it up um, do a test first to make sure it's sewing okay before you commit and remember to make sure that your differential feed is on one when you do it don't turn that knob by accident so differential feeds on one all my tensions are normal which on this machine is four and off I go push 
down that side and that is done cool and then this piece here now has pattern see right sides together I'm now going to take this guy here and stitch them together so right sides together I'm going to stitch the I'm going to stitch these two pieces but before we do I'm going to take a quick side step and talk about how to sew a, sew a curve like this on your overlocker normal straight sewing on an overlocker it's easy peasy you sew there's not much drama but when you start doing a curve on your overlocker the issue that you have apart from steering because that comes with practice is that as your fabric curves notice here not a lot of stretch I'll do it on one piece in here. Oh no, I'll do two. But as we go to the 45 degree mark of that curve, so basically on the bias, all of a sudden there's tons of stretch on that fabric. So what we'll find is as we sew on the overlocker, and I'll see if I can, this is a pretty good overlocker, it doesn't do it as much, but I'll see if I can show you what I mean. Can you see? Yep, okay, here we go. Zoom around, 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 around. So that once I've done that curve, See how this curve has a wobble going on? See that? So what's happening there is the overlockers feed dogs, and I've done a differential feed video before, so go back and find it, but the feed dogs at the front are pulling just a little bit more slowly than the feed dogs at the back because this fabric is stretching while it sews. So we need to compensate for that for that by speeding up those front feed dogs the differential feed was on one so I could test it I'm going to change that to 1.5 which is nothing you know secret about that 1.5 means that the front feed dogs are going one and a half times faster in the back which will then stop this dragging action which is stretching the fabric and giving that wobbliness so I've just got another bit of fabric that I cut on a curve I've set my differential feed to one and a half and then round the corner we go round the curve and you can see that is completely flat see the difference so that guy there versus the same angle that one there see the movement so for our pocket we're going to use uh, our differential feed experience so that when we go around this curve we're actually going to change our differential feed from 1 to 1.5 but you have a straight line here before you get to that curve so we're going to do this part on one and then when we get to here we're going to increase our differential feed to one and a half so let's do it so lining up again it's right sides together and you could pin it and remember if you're pinning with your overlocker pin over here don't pin real close because a you have to stop and take them out and b if you hit them with your knife you'll break your knife and it'll cost you 70 bucks to get new blades all right so i'm starting at one differential feed at one and off i go Zoom. and then as i feel that i need to start turning here I'm going to reach around and change that differential feed to one and a half and then just take that corner or curve more accurately and then if I had a long straight stretch again I would go back to one to finish it off. And so now we have this lovely flat curve. See we've got no wobbles at all which is great for our pocket because we don't want a wobbly pocket. So park the oval off to the side for a second and look at what we've done. So we have put this piece on right side to right side with the fabric. We have attached the back side of the pocket right side to right side like so, which gives us this guy here. So now what we need to do is fold over this join here at the front of the pants like so. And you'll see that that back piece has filled the void for the piece of fabric that we chopped off. Do I have it? I do, I have it. So essentially, there's a bit of fabric that we chopped off and the voids getting filled now by this pocket so I would like to just press this real quick with my iron just to give a nice neat finish but I'm not going to spend too much time being pedantic while you're watching but if you were so inclined this would be a good time to um, pop in uh, your pop it under your sewing machine and do a nice little top stitch here just because it looks cute but we'll just press that here and then as we go to do the next part we probably want to do some pinning just to stop the movement of our pocket flapping around here so I'm going to go ahead and chuck a couple of pins in just move that back so I'm going to pop a pin in here out of the way just a couple of pins just to hold everything together so now we have our front piece again so we're back to our front piece we're going to get our back piece oh, oh I knocked the iron over <laughs> silly penny all right so now we have a back piece and again uh we're going to do a pattern on there so you know which is the right side so there's our flower 
and there's our flower so that is right sides together line up those side seams here like so and of course again pinning if you want to and differential feed as habit the first thing we do when we set up our overlocker is check that differential feed is back to one because we are just doing straight down so we don't have any dramas there making sure this is all flat all these little loose bits, I'm going to pull them out here so they get cut off in the side seam. And then down we go. So can you see it? Yep. All right, let's do it. So away we go. And I'm a bit worried about this lump. If I was a bit worried about this lump here, I would stop a couple of inches ahead of it. Don't stop at the bump and start worrying about it. You want to sort of take a run at it with your overlock or wherever possible. So pulling out all those loose threads and then keep on going. go and now if we have a look at this little guy here if we turn this out we have just made our pants with a pocket so this is your pocket now if we take these pins out we have this little pocket here so you can put your hands in there this is really cute done in alternating colors like i've done here with a bright contrasting color it looks fabulous as patterns this part of the top here this will fold over and become the waistband so it gets caught in the waistband is probably the easiest way to do it or caught as the waistband but if your pattern has a separate waistband you would just go ahead and attach it here as normal because nothing here has changed you've just changed the fabric that's there but the shape hasn't changed so to stop this from happening while we're doing other stuff i'm going to come back to the overlocker again and just give her a run down here and just making sure everything stays together as i do and that way it won't come apart as i'm doing the next bit of my pants construction and to be honest, at this point, if I was making these little shorts, I would also come along here with my overlocker, now that this side seam is done, and uh, overcast my edges. To do that, we want to make sure that, see how this is folded over up here? We want to make sure that it's folded in the same direction down here, and then back underneath. And now I have an edge that I can just fold over for a hem without having to, you know, triple fold it, because that edge is not going to fray out now. Cool? So there is your little pocket sorted out in these cute little pants oh i just want to finish these pants now there is the pocket there super duper easy to do not scary at all and as i said you can take any existing uh shorts pattern and convert the front piece into a pocket piece and then when you're doing it don't forget when you're going around a curve your differential feed needs to be set to one and a half instead of one now to make the rest of the pants i'm not going to do that now but i will have to sew a curve this way for the crotch and I want to talk about differential feed when you're doing a concave curve. Try saying that three times fast, a concave curve. So here is what I'm talking about. So same thing, I'm going to go here, pretend this is the crotch, and I'm going to do that with my differential feed set on one. And around we go. Like so. And as you can see here, I've also stretched this guy here. See how it's stretched up a little tiny bit? Because it is still on the cross, and you'll notice I have some loose pieces, I'm going to take my differential feed down to one and a half. And of course, going into it isn't curved, so I might go at one for a minute. Well, I'll tell you in a minute, a second. And as I get to that curve, I'm going to change that to one and a half. And then sew so my curve. And again, see that? Look nice and flat so the difference differential feed makes to curve sewing is huge if you're doing any sort of dressmaking and you are doing uh, pants making you're doing the crotch that's curved out don't hesitate to do that differential feed a turn while you're doing it Alrighty, so um i think that's the shorts pockets all sorted for tonight uh thank you very much for watching those who are watching right now give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it hi mom um what i might do now is i might just finish the shorts i'm going to go ahead and do it if you want to keep watching uh feel free otherwise uh, i'll catch you later guys i'll see you next week for another video um thanks for watching all right i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the shorts now so right sides to right sides i'm not gonna do a pocket again because we just did a pocket i'm gonna go ahead and right side to right side and do these side seams here there we go Whoosh. Checking my differential feeds on one, not one and a half, when I do this. And then open this up, and I want to stop the top from fraying out so I can fold it over and make a uh, 
a waistband out of it and this one here because this is folded and it's facing to the back I'm going to fold this also so that faces the back so this is the back this is the back here so I'm going to fold this to the back and then just one layer just making sure this is not caught up as I do it here we go push and then because this is folded this way here I want to go ahead and make sure it's pointing the same way at the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing again and when you overlock there's a right side and wrong side to your overlocking typically we like this side to be up and seen and this side here to be folded over and tucked away because that's a little rougher all right and here we go so always shave off a little bit with your overlocker you always if you're shaving off a little bit of fabric then you're doing the right thing you'll line up the way that you want it to all right so there's our bits now is mum still looking yeah i better chop off all these loose edges then. all right so here and here all these little loose threads you can catch chop off these loose threads in the next scene that you do but the risk you take is that they don't get chopped off properly and they get caught in a seam and they have to go back later with a little pair of scissors and cut them so i'm going to cut them off now so there's two different schools of thought when it comes to doing the um, legs of a pair of shorts or pants. I like to sew the leg completely first, so we're going to do that. And we're going to start at the crotch and work our way down. And like so. Push. And we're going to do the same on this one here. And when it comes to pants, you want to sew your pants in the same direction. So if you're sewing from the bottom up on one leg, sew the other leg bottom up as well. And that way you don't get any twists in your fabric. Okay, so now I have two completed parts of the pants. We've got one side and the other side, one with a pocket, one not. What happens next blows everybody's minds the first time I teach them how to do a pair of shorts as beginner sewers. But it is, if you get a pair of made pants and have a look at turning them out this way, it makes perfect sense. What we're going to do here is we're going to have one leg of the pants left the wrong way out and the other leg of the pants turned the right way out, like this. I love that little pocket. Cameron, do you remember mum? Cameron used to have pants like this all the time. They had little pieces of colour and stuff here. Oh. Okay, so now we're going to take this one that's turned right side out. Ooh, looks like an elephant's trunk. And we're going to pop it inside the other one. So right sides are together on this one, so it's wrong side out. We're going to pop this in so that the side seams are together and the inside seam is together and then line up these two crotch seams here and here so you can see this here that's the crotch there and there and I think as blase as I am about pinning because this is so small and my gloves make things just a little bit more cumbersome I'm going to pin that a couple of times and because I love to go real fast on my overlock I'm going to pin them here and here out of the way and, and honestly I love if you have an overlocker and it's in the cupboard and you haven't used it, they love to run. So get them out and even if you just run them without being threaded, give that motor a bit of a run. But, you know, dust them off and have a try. I give lots of people lessons on how to use their overlocker and almost every time people are like, why didn't I do this sooner? Because it's so much easier once you get over that, you know, nervousness that you have because they're such noisy, cranky sounding things. Alrighty, so pin, pin, pin. Here we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew around that crotch all the way around. And when I do circular sewing my overlocker, I like to work into the circle like this, not out of the circle like that. See how the circle's sort of going against me, where if I do it this way, I'm going into the circle and around. So we're going to line that up and then zoom off we go. Now, again, I remember my differential feed as I do the straight bit, leave it on one. Change the differential feed to one and a half, and then, can you see that okay? I might come over a bit more, seeing that we're not cutting anymore. Then in we go, into that crotch, round, and through. And then stopping here and just recapopulating myself so that I can go ahead and finish that curve. Differential feed goes back to one, and then zoom, down there and through. And now, if we take out, oh, pricked myself. 
I have to say, more than once, Corey would say to me from the car seat in the back of the car, she'd say, Mom, there's a pin pricking into me because I forgot to take a pin out of something that I made for her. All right, so now that looks like that. You're like, well, what is the hell going on there? Now if we reach in and pull that other leg out... All of a sudden, there is your little shorts. So turn the right way. And that is shorts with a nifty little pocket all done. And from here, you would go to your sewing machine. And because this is already uh, overcast, you could get away with just turning it over once and doing a hem all the way around on it. And likewise, on your waistband at the top, you just need to keep a gap so that you can put your elastic in. So there is a pair of shorts made completely from scratch with a pocket. As far as that leg thing is concerned, I promise you, if you go and get a pair of jeans from your cupboard and turn them inside out and then pop, when you do turn them inside out, pop one leg into the other like so... All of a sudden, that technique will make perfect sense, and it'll really, really help you. Uh, and I say that all the time. If you're making a pair of shorts and you're not real sure what to do next, get a pair of shorts and uh, have a look at them. Have them next to you while you work. It's like a muse. All righty, guys. I'm going to head on out, and uh, I'm going to go home and watch Yara, I think. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.